We are talking basic chainsaw safety with Troy. Troy, I cringe when I see folks wearing things like flip-flops and shorts when they're chainsawing. Can you enlighten us on why that's wrong and what we should do about it? As I like to say, it cuts wood very well and it tears flesh. Obviously, you've got a chain spinning around at 10 to 12,000 RPM. So there's a few uh, personal protective items, PPE, that we highly recommend. So you're telling me my double knee Carhartts aren't going to do the job? No, and those can actually be detrimental. When the chain hits fabric, it'll actually pull the chain further in towards that fabric. Chainsaw chaps obviously have uh, the Kevlar in there specifically to, to bind that chain up. So no loincloths and flip-flops is what you're telling me. It looks like Zach Nye, District Forester, Iowa DNR, is ready to go. So Zach's got a helmet on that includes earmuffs for hearing protection and a face screen. He's got safety glasses to protect his eyes. He's got a set of leather gloves for his hands, chainsaw chaps to protect his legs, and a pair of sturdy work boots. Zach looks like he means business. Suited up for battle. <laughs> There's a couple of ways to start a saw that are approved by saw manufacturers. The first one would be to put your right toe through the rear handle, your left hand on the front, the front handle of the saw, and to pull it over with your right hand. The second one would be to put that rear handle and pinch it between your legs with your left hand on the front handle and then pull it over with your right hand. What I see a lot of guys doing is they just grab onto that front handle with their left hand and the starter rope with their right hand and they do what's known as a drop start. And that's not approved and it's actually very dangerous because if that saw happens to kick back while you're starting it, because you only have one hand, that saw can actually rotate within your hand and that bar can come up and, and hit you in the face. Did you spill some wine on the tip of that saw? Like, what's up with that? We've painted the tip of this saw to, to signify the danger zone on the bar. This is the zone that's responsible for kickback. And what happens is those teeth bite into, into the log that you're cutting, or a lot of times it's actually something that you don't see, another branch that's behind the log you're cutting. The teeth bite into that, and it will throw the chainsaw both back towards you and up. So the danger zone. Is that from the Kenny Loggins song or <laughs> so is there anything that can like help, you know, eliminate kickback or reduce it? They actually make anti kickback chains or safety chains. They have a special tie strap between the cutter teeth that sticks up a little bit higher than a standard one and that helps prevent the tooth from from biting into wood around the, the nose of that bar. Okay, gotcha. I can see that on the bottom image there. Yep. What about gripping this thing? I see a lot of people one hand in these. I don't know. What, what's the proper hand position on these things? Well, anytime you're going to be bucking, making a vertical cut through wood, uh, your right hand should be on the rear handle and your left hand should be on the top of the front handle, directly behind the chain break. If you ever get into a kickback scenario, your wrist if the saw kicks back, we'll actually roll forward on that handle and hit the chain break, break, stopping the chain. I did not know that. If you're cutting horizontally, you can hold it on the side only if you're cutting horizontally. If you hold it on the side and you're doing a vertical cut, there's nothing there that's going to activate that chain break to stop the chain from spinning. So I also see a lot of dangling chains out there. Um, way, way, way droopy. What's going on? That's definitely bad. It's also a safety issue because if you have a loose chain, it's more likely to become derailed off the bar. Really, your chain should be snug all the way around the bar. And if you pull the chain out of, out of the bar, it should snap right back into the bar. You don't want to over-tension the chain. So if it's really hard to pull out and it snaps back really tight, you're stealing yourself a power because your power head now has to fight against all that extra tension. So I've noticed this little shark tooth looking thing at the base of the bar. Is that a safety feature? What is that? How do I tell if that's, that's going to hurt me? That is a chain catch to stop that chain if it comes off the bar. It should be right underneath where the bar mounts, underneath the cover. Sometimes they're attached to the side cover. They can be either aluminum or some of them are plastic. 
you should make sure that that, that is present because it, it prevents that chain from whipping around and coming back and hitting that rear handle. So we've done it. We've assembled the perfectly safe posture and saw technique. I can't believe it, but we've done it. Yeah, Zach's got all of his PPE on, and he's also got the right grip on the saw with his left hand right behind the chain break and his right hand on the rear handle. He's in a comfortable position to go ahead and, and buck off a piece of firewood here. You want to keep the power head right up against the wood and cut with the bottom of the bar and keep the tip away from any cutting. Chainsaw safety is serious business. We will see you and your intact self in the woods.